Okay. Então, um, boa tarde a todas e a todos. Um, vamos começar a nossa uh, tarde, um, que hoje vai ter um painel com, um, com quatro um, participantes internacionais. Uh, vamos começar por ter um, connosco a, a, a Tina Hox. Um, eu vou dar a palavra à Tina. So, I'm Tina Hogg and I am a co-founder of Disabled People Against Cuts, DPEC for short, in the UK, but I now live in Portugal, in the beautiful, quiet Ribatasia region. DPEC was formed in 2010, following a mass protest against government austerity cuts and their impact on disabled people. DPAC believes that every disabled person should have full rights and equality. It refuses to accept that any country can destroy its citizens who are disabled. It is against government austerity measures that penalize the poor whilst leaving the wealthy alone. And it refuses to stay silent about the injustices made by wealthy politicians on ordinary people. We follow the social... We follow the social model as a base for our actions that disability is caused by the barriers that society creates which inhibits those of us with impairments from engaging with employment, resources, travel, discussions, etc. The first slide, we've got one in English and we have one in Portuguese. Um, desculpa, meu português é insuficiente, por isso. But we go through the medical model here. Um, this is the traditional model where we, disabled people, are the problem. Uh, we are seen as either tragic cases or, or as a burden to the state. But it is our problem that we cannot access services, transport, um, that we are stuck in the house. Um, The second slide, por favor, is C, the social model of disability. This is the one that contradicts totally the medical model. Um, and it's the one that, that as I said, Deepak um, abides to. The social model unites people who face common barriers so that we can collectively fight for social change. The fight for independent living in the UK began in the 1970s. Services were institutional, paternalistic, very medically orientated and out of touch with individual needs. A group of disabled people living in an institution began looking at how independent living was operating in the United States and applied these principles. This included asserting control over their own lives, empowering themselves and taking more control over what was happening to them and making choices. Eventually, they were able to negotiate a financial package with the local council who was paying for their institutional care and were able to move out into the community. I will not be giving a detailed history, but I do want to mention the Independent Living Fund introduced by the UK government in the late 1980s, fought for by disabled people after a major change in benefits. It was to be administered by national government, not local councils. This was followed by the Direct Payments Act, again fought for by disabled people, which gave more control and choice to individuals. 
Social care wasn't and still is not free at the point of need. And many disabled people who need care do not get it as they cannot afford to pay. Deepak is fighting to change this. Right, okay, fast forward to this century and the enthusiasm for austerity embraced by a conservative led government. I want to be clear that I do not believe austerity to be an economic aim. I firmly believe that it supports an ideology. If austerity was economic, then there would have been strong measures introduced to claw back money from tax evading big businesses, expense fiddling politicians, 90% of whom were millionaires, by the way. Instead, there was a constantly reinforced message that welfare cuts were necessary. There was a demonizing of disabled people, as well as those that were unemployed as being scroungers, lazy and undeserving. There were drastic cuts to government departments, which led to essential services such as libraries, lost my pace, such as libraries or disabled children's day centres being reduced or even closed. This was a deliberate dismantling of the welfare state, in my opinion undermining 60 years of core social security protections. The disability living allowance was changed to the personal independence payments with new tests and narrow criteria. There was a huge reduction in financial support and many disabled people, over 650,000 in fact, saw increased poverty and a deter deterioration in well-being and quality of life. Those who did manage to receive the new benefit found that most of their money was taken by the local council to pay towards their social care support. Those with the highest support needs and those who need overnight care lost the most money. At the same time, the Independent Living Fund was abolished. This was in June 2015. And responsibility returned to the local councils whose own budgets were, had been severely cut. This led to a postcode lottery. Some people receiving a full care package from their council, whilst others had their care packages cut, some by half the previous amount. And in some cases, disabled people have had to go into residential care as they can no longer afford to live independently in the community. In some cases, due to a chronic lack of local provision, disabled people are sent far away from their friends and families. And those with mental health diagnosis may be sent a long way away for treatment. Deepak, along with other groups, have fought for the UK to ratify the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This has not happened. When the United Nations Special Rapporteur visited the UK, they concluded that there were, and I quote, grave and systematic violations of human rights. The United Nations Committee announced that they were, and I quote again, and I feel this is so important, they were deeply concerned that the United Kingdom still considered itself a champion of human rights, despite the inconsistency of its disability policies and its failure to meet its commitments under the convention. I want to finish on a positive note and I want to talk about the Reclaiming Our Futures Alliance. This is an alliance made up of disabled people and their organisations, including DPAC in, in England. The report is a vision for a national independent living service, co-created between government and disabled people. It would be funded by general taxation, managed by central government, 
led by disabled people and delivered locally in co-production with disabled people. This would end the postcode lottery, which greatly increased after the closure of the independent living fund. We also call for new legislation encompassing Article 19 of the United Nations Convention. The report is available online and I think is inspiring and full of ideas for, for Portugal and any other country that might be interested. It's, you know, it, the, the, the quality of the report, it, it stands up well. Um, it's available online and after I finish, the last slide will give you the website address along with the DPAC website should you want to have a look at that. In these difficult times, the fight goes on. We mustn't lose hope. We mustn't lose sight of, the, of our vision, our shared vision for a fair and just future. By making alliances, sharing information and experiences, breaking down barriers, confronting bigotry and bias, we can continue to move forward. Mundo obrigada. Can I have the final slide, please? Okay, Tina, thank you so much.